Hey y'all. Um, so welcome to our week two video lecture for creative writing. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things today. Uh, what you read for me, both from your textbook, Field Guide to Flash Fiction, as well as from Smoke Long Quarterly, the online magazine. Um, and I'd also like to talk about some writing strategies, uh, some fiction theory, and finally some assignment work. Uh, some things to sort of get you started writing generatively, um, generally in all sorts of ways. So, um, let's start with the guide to flash fiction. So, I picked this one to start with, 40 Stories in the Desert, because it includes two really fascinating ideas about what makes flash fiction work that I find super useful, that I have to, like, kind of center on in a lot of different ways. Um, the first is the idea of an image, the idea that there is something seen or felt or understood that creates a possibility for multiple meanings in context. Let me try and say that again. That's what I meant, but even still, it's kind of a fidgety idea, if you will. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of great writing centers on being able to see something or sense something and have that sensation be interpretable, interpreted in multiple ways throughout a given piece. Um, these images, these things that arrest you, these visual objects or, you know, sometimes senses of smell. And in fact, uh, when we get to start talking about the story, they do a really interesting thing with images, perhaps. Um, but... <clears throat> They give the reader something to understand. They give the reader something to focus on. And they also give you a chance to introduce our second idea, which is that of a turn. So um, when we say turn in writing, what we mean is that something is going in one direction and then swivels. A lot of times this means that uh, we're dealing with an image and considering it in one context and then we switch to consider it in some different context. That's how those two ideas go together. Um, the idea of turns might seem like some fancy New Age quiet stuff, uh, but in fact, if you translate that to Italian, the word is volta, and they're part of sonnets which have been dating back all the way to Petrarch and probably before that. Shakespeare is really well known for the turns in his sonnets, um, wherein he is considering an idea in one particular lens, uh, usually through the first ten lines. Not a Shakespearean expert. Uh, and then he flops for the last quatrain and gives us something brand new, looks at it in an entirely different light. Uh, this is important. This is worthwhile. Uh, it gives, in an incredibly small amount of space, the reader something to latch onto. And in the absence of having enough room to create an entire arcing plot, it lets you include subtle, vital details and create that sense of change that I think is maybe kind of essential to really effective writing. Um, so I know that's kind of super up in the airsy. Uh, in terms of, you know, what is an image and how does it turn. Uh, but I think by focusing on those ideas, we can perhaps get at writing a little more directly. Um, so that's why I wanted you to read One Degree of Safety this week um, by Andrew, I'm going to say Greets. Uh, in either case, I love this story because, first off, it does exactly what the example from your guide to flash fiction asks for, in that it centers on an image or two, the idea of wasps um, and what they might mean. It considers that in many different ways and lets the various uh, weights of a wasp, the various way, the various meanings that this idea can contain, almost uh, several of them get onto the page. We get to see wasp as a source of danger. We get to see wasp as 
uh, a sense of community. We get to see Wasp as a sense of uh, fascination and uh, like fierce natural beauty. Um, and we even get to see Wasp as a metaphor for tenderness, which is kind of wild, honestly. Like the fact that we can get to the tenderness of a Wasp is itself sort of surprising on a lot of levels. So, I like that story for that reason. I like particularly that as it focuses on an image, one of the things it does is sort of use a fact as an aspect of this image. What I'm talking about is the literal title here. This idea that wasps can surround, or excuse me, that honeybees can surround a wasp and melt it by raising their body temperature to 116 degrees precisely because the wasp will die at 115 degrees and the bees can survive up to 117. So they literally have one degree in which all of their troubles melt away. Um, and that's just a kind of a brilliant, beautiful little thing. Uh, but it also uses, it uses this scientific fact this surprising natural thing uh, as a metaphor for the human experience. And in that way, sort of that fact operates in a lot of the same ways that an image does. And in fact, at the end, it's that fact image that the story turns on one last time, showing us how these two brothers are a lot like those wasps in that they are working together to create a sense of community that can help them survive through their various myriad problems, which as we learn towards the end, includes their father's cancer, right? So, um, it's a fascinating story. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Uh, or that you can get something out of it uh, to various degrees. So, um, that's some fiction theory, some things that I want you to be thinking about. I've got some assignments coming up that are going to kind of play off of that and give you some space to, to think and to wonder and to move forward. Um, I want to talk a little bit about writing technique, though. Um, and that's another one of the reasons that I picked the section I did to start us with. It talks about the 15-minute story. The idea that you sit down and you have 15 minutes to finish an entire draft of a story. Um, I like to start an egg timer when I do this and just tick, 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 tick. The idea being that whatever you do, you're never, you're not allowed to look at that draft for at least a month or so. Excuse me. After having written it. Um... I really like that activity. I know it can be super scary, particularly if you've never done it before, but here are the benefits for it. When you set yourself a madcap time scale, you activate the parts of your brain that don't wake up unless you're in an emergency, um, to some degree or another, right? Uh, if you've ever had that uh, late night inspiration writing a paper that was, you know, you should have been working on for a long time, but you saved to the last night, I'm sure you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but it seems like when you're under a deadline, you're just a genius. That's not a made-up feeling. It really isn't. So setting these incredibly tight clocks to write an entire story can help you out uh, a lot. Um, and I strongly advocate that you try to do that this week. In fact, uh, that's going to be your part of what I'm going to ask you to do. You'll see in your written assignment as we move towards it. Um... It's a surprisingly effective technique. And a related thing that I would like to introduce to you is the idea of steady writing or free writing, nonstop writing, automatic writing. There are a lot of different words you might hear thrown around it. Here's what I'm talking about. When I write, I do not move my fingers from the keyboard, uh, not under any circumstances. And if I find that I am unable to write productively at that particular moment I will sit there and type I am not writing productively I don't know why I sit here I'm just sitting here and I'm just doing this and I just type basic nonsense words but you know no real concern as to their quality and it's completely okay if it's just self-referential I don't like that I'm sitting here with nothing else to write forcing myself to compose words and sentences right uh, and you don't let yourself stop composing until you've reached 
uh, your goal, whatever that might be. Um, whether that be a time goal, whether that be a certain number of words. Um, the longer you can do that, the more you can write for extensive periods, for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time without ever allowing yourself to not compose. Uh, I feel like this does so much good for you, particularly as a learning writer. What I'm getting at is that so often, if you sit around and wait until you have a sentence you think is good enough, you spend a lot of time sitting here and staring at the page. And when you spend time staring at the page, your grades goes around the room. And if you're anything like me, you got a lot of cool stuff on the walls. And, you know, maybe there's a book you need to read. And, oh, wow, this is dirty. And so easy to get distracted, right? However, if on the other hand, you acknowledge that you're not allowed to stop, you're not allowed to edit, you're not allowed to go back, you're not allowed to rethink, you're not allowed to go, hmm, what is the best way to say this? But rather, compose, 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 compose then you free yourself up, and I'm gonna quote uh, another uh, writing manual here, to write shitty first drafts, if you'll allow me the language. Um, you free yourself up from the expectation to write flawlessly or near flawlessly or good enough, all of which are constructs created, created by your brain that do not line up with how good art is created. So, um, the instinct, my instinct when I was a young writer, my instinct still, if I'm being all the way honest, is to sit there and wait for inspiration to come to me. But time and practice have shown me the best method is to chase inspiration down, to run it onto the page via fast work. Um, if nothing else, uh, and among, let me rephrase that, among other multiple benefits, this is also just going to make you a much better typist. Um, if you prefer to write by hand, uh, I understand, particularly when we get to poetry, I've done a lot of that. I feel that it helps particularly with these writing exercises, and that is allowed. Um, very very much so. Uh, so that's my sort of writing advice for you this week is to when composing, do nothing else and to allow yourself to write quickly, rapidly, without concern. Um, the more you do that, the easier things are going to be moving forward. Okay. So, about your writing assignments this week, uh, your discussion board is going to be a prompt I want you guys to get started with. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple options. One, there was a prompt in your Rose Metal Fiction Press that is honestly a lot of fun. Uh, the inkblot test thing is a lot of fun, and it really does help you to focus on on images and I want you guys to consider doing that. I'm also going to uh, give you the opportunity to in a way imitate one degree of safety. So here's the situation I want to set you up with. You have two people having a conversation that has to center around a fascinating scientific fact. Your goal eventually is to have that fascinating scientific fact reflect back on their relationship. But what I want you to really focus on is just getting to that situation and letting something happen on the page. So in other words, pick a scientific fact, invent two basic types of people. Here we have two brothers, one of them's a scientist, one of the other one's married. That's literally all we've got, right? One's 34. The uh, You don't need all of the details about these people to get started here, right? Write about them discovering and sharing this fact and see if you can then turn that to make that metaphor about them. So uh, I'm going to formalize that up and let you see it in uh, your discussion board here in a second. Uh, do you have any questions? Anything on your mind? Please, please let me know. Um, also, I have to once again encourage you guys. I don't have to, but I want to. I want to encourage you guys to do your best to get to know each other, to post on each other's forum posts, to uh, to interact as much as possible. As we keep going, this class is going to be more fun and more fruitful if we're doing it all together rather than all doing it at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, so thank you so very much. I really appreciate you guys. Let me know how else I can help you. Uh, con cuidado.